Good morning everyone, I'm Austin with Axiom Tool Group and welcome to part one of our machine training portion. Today we're going to cover three different topics. Machine maintenance, we're going to talk about surfacing our spool boards on a brand new machine or an existing machine. Then we're also going to cover your first application which is usually going to be a V-carving operation. So let's get started. Whether you're a brand new machine owner or you have an existing machine, daily maintenance is always important to remember. On an Axiom machine it's pretty simple. You have prismatic linear guides and ball screws on all three of your axes, Z, X, and Y. All we're going to do is just make sure they're lubricated daily upon machine use, and that's simple. Wiping down the guides and the ball screws with three-in-one light machine oil. Topical lubrication is important. If you decide to purchase a maintenance kit, all that stuff is included in that kit ready to go. Before we get started, we're gonna go ahead and turn the machine on and make sure it's home. This is important, every single time your machine is turned on, you should always home it. So with the power button on, the screen that you're gonna see first pop up after your loading screen is gonna ask you if you wanna home all axes. We're simply gonna press the OK button on the controller. The Z is gonna come up first, followed by X and Y, and we're gonna to move to our home position on our machine, which is always the far left-hand corner. Now that the machine has been homed, we'll see our main screen here. This is our coordinate screen. All of these coordinates are just telling you how far you are from your last set origin. So in our case, we have X, Y, Z, and if you have a Pro Plus series machine, you'll have an additional button that says A. That's gonna allow you to control your fourth axis rotary kit. On an Iconic series machine, it's three axis only. So we're gonna have our Z, X, and Y, and no fourth axis upgrade option. So, these buttons on the controller just simply allow us to move the machine in any one of its directions. So we have our X, our Y, and then of course our Z. So now that our machine has been homed, we can lubricate our prismatic linear guides and ball screws before we get started. If you don't yet have an Axiom maintenance kit, it's a good idea to pick one up. It's gonna include everything you need to keep your machine in good working order. So included in your kit is gonna be some rags for wiping down your guides and just keeping things generally clean. You're going to have your grease gun for lubricating your ball nuts and your cars. Coming up to the top here, inside the toolbox, get a nice Axiom sticker. If you have a Pro Series machine or an Elite Series machine, you're going to have a piece of 5mm tubing included. This is for flushing your system, your coolant system. A brush for keeping things clean, of course, and then your 3-in-1 light machine oil for lubricating those guides. Today what we're going to be using is our 3-in-1 light machine oil and just a couple rags. Okay, so we're just going to take our 3-in-1 oil and our rag and just simply saturate that rag, and we're gonna wipe these guides down. The ball screw, we'll just kinda of put some on here. What I like to do is just saturate it like this and just run across the bottom. We're just gonna jog our X across. That way we can get to our other side, and we're working that new topical lubrication in. All right, and that's our Z-axis. So after you jog the gantry out of the way, your prismatic linear guides are gonna be located on the side of your table here. We'll go ahead and saturate that rag again, and wipe them down. Getting underneath the machine to lubricate the Y-axis ball screw can sometimes be a problem. So if you have a stand like this, it keeps the underside of the machine available for any of your maintenance procedures. So the ball screw on the Y-axis is gonna be located in the center of the machine. So we can just reach under, and same deal, wipe it down. Okay, now our top lubrication has been applied and we're ready to get going. All right, so now that we've got our daily maintenance out of the way, it's time to actually begin our first job. So what we're going to be doing today is we're actually gonna be surfacing the spool boards. Now, if you have a brand new machine, it's always a good idea to do this as your first operation. So what is spool board surfacing? Well, essentially, surfacing your spool boards gives you the ability to make sure that your spool boards are nice and flat and there's no inconsistencies in the table. It could be higher over here than it is over here. This is just simply MDF. So MDF can change depending on what environment you're in as well. So keep that in mind. Or if you have an older machine like ours here and you've just simply used it, you've got a lot of cuts in your spool boards, things of that nature, well, it's time to go ahead and cut those spool boards so we have a nice consistent flat surface. Now, if you're an Axiom owner and you've received an Axiom machine, 
The spool board surfacing file already comes preloaded on your handheld controller. It's stored in the internal memory. So it's very simple. All you need is your mortising tool. If you've purchased the three-piece bit set, your mortising tool is included in that bit set. So all we have to do, set our origins, make sure our machine is homed, of course, set the origins at our home position, set our Z height, set our spindle RPM, and simply run the file from internal memory. Now, if you have a machine that is older, like ours here, and has a couple inconsistencies, a couple cut-throughs, it's also a good idea to surface your spool boards every now and then, just to make sure your tabletop is nice and flat. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is just make sure our machine is homed. So if you haven't homed the machine yet, you can always press the home button on the controller, press OK for home all, and it's gonna return back to the home position. So the spool board surfacing toolpath that's saved in here. The XY0 is placed at our home position, which we're already jogging there, so we'll set it once we get there. The Z0 is gonna be placed at the top of your table. So now that the machine is in the home position, looking at our screen, we can press the XY0 button on the controller. You'll notice now X and Y both read 00. That's telling us that that is the new origin position for our first set of origins at the home. Next thing we need to do is put our bit in and set our Z0. So let's do that now. The collet nut itself just spins right off. And with your Iconic, you're gonna receive an eighth inch and a quarter inch ER20 collet. So collets are important. Remember, this is a wearable item, so it is important that if they're just old or if they get dropped on the floor, you can replace these. So with these, they do lock in place, and this is always key. Make sure that they snap in place when you change out your collet. They should snap and then be threaded back up on the spindle. Now our Iconic Series is a one horsepower air-cooled electro spindle. So you're gonna receive that quarter and that eighth inch collet, but it's only gonna be quarter inch collet size max. Remember that. Now that our quarter inch collet is in place, we can grab the bit we're gonna be using, which is that quarter inch mortising bit from our three-piece bit set. We'll slide that guy up into position here. Go ahead and grab our set of wrenches and just make sure that's nice and tight. Now that our bit is in location and it's locked in, we can set our Z zero. Now setting your Z, you have two methods. You can either use your touch off puck, which is included with your machine, or you can set it manually. So we'll do the touch off puck first and then I'll show you the manual method as well. So the touch off puck that's included with your machine, the puck end will simply be placed on the top of your spool board, and then your banana plug connector will go in the top of the Z. You'll press the tool set button on the controller and the Z will come down. Once the bit makes contact with the puck, it will retract. We can unplug the puck and put it back in the drawer and our Z0 has been set. Now, that's using your touch off puck and setting it or we can do the manual method. The manual method, there's a couple different ways to do this. You'll see some guys put a piece of paper down, feel resistance, and set their Z0. Um, some guys, we use a flashlight. It really just depends on your personal preference, or you can kind of eye it. But all you're doing is just bringing the Z down manually until your bit is making contact with the surface of your material. Once it's there, you'll simply press the Z0 button on the controller right next to the XY0. And you'll notice Z now reads zero. At that point, our XY0 and our Z0 have now been set, so our origins are ready to go. We can bring the Z up out of the way by hitting the Z positive button. And the only thing left now is to set our spindle RPM. Now it's important to remember that your spindle RPM is not taken from the G code from your software. It's always set on an Axiom machine manually at the machine. So with an Iconic series machine, you're gonna have a dial down here on your VFD now on these, it's gonna read 400 when the spindle is off, but when the spindle is running, it's actually gonna be reading the RPM. Now this is just frequency that you're seeing. So you'll take this number, multiply it by 60, and that will give you your RPM. Or once the spindle's running, it will display that operating RPM. 
So for this bit, we're gonna run this about 18,000 RPM. So we're gonna turn this dial back so that it reads about 300. So 299, that's pretty close. All right, so now that our spindle RPMs have been set, we're pretty much ready to go. Now we're actually ready to run our file. We've set our origins, both for X and Y. We've set our Z0, bits chucked in, ready to go. And we've also set our spindle RPM. Now we're ready to access the internal memory on the controller and run that file. So as we get started here, we're gonna start by running this job without the dust shoe attached. This will allow you to see the few thousandths of an inch that are being taken off of this full board surface first. Then what we're going to do is stop the job. We're gonna save a break on the controller, reattach our dust shoe, and then pick up where we left off. Now the save break function on your controller that's built in is nice if you have to stop, leave midway through a job, come back the next day, or if you unfortunately break a bit during an operation, you can always come back, change your bit, and pick up where you left off. Okay, to access the internal memory, or to simply run a file, we're gonna press the run pause delete button on the controller. So tap that once, and you're gonna see an option for U-Disk or internal. In this case, if we had a flash drive inserted at the top of the controller, we would select U-Disk, but we're gonna be running from internal memory. So we'll scroll down, so internal memory is highlighted, and press the OK button on the controller. Now you'll notice the only file that we have stored in our internal memory currently is going to be that spool board servicing file. Now this number here, that eight, indicates that we have an AR8. If we had an AR6, it would read six. If we had an AR4, it would of course read a four. That's just your bed size. So pressing the OK button one more time, you'll get your work speed, fast speed, and speed scale screen. So these two you can pretty much ignore. It's gonna be taking that code from your software. The one that you wanna pay attention to is gonna be your speed scale. So you'll notice our speed scale right now reads 0.6. Well, all speed scale is, is just a percentage of your feed rate, which we can change while the machine is running. So in this case, we're gonna change this to 100 so 100% would be one. So we'll press the run pause delete button, enter in one and press okay. And now we'll see that reads 1.0, which is equivalent to 100%. Now in your case, this is probably already gonna be set at one, so you can just leave it alone. But basically what speed scale is going to do is allow you to change in 10% increments the feed rate that you're receiving from the software. So we're gonna be running this bit about 100 inches per minute this is set at one, that means it will run at 100 inches per minute. If we press the OK button one more time here, we'll get a three second countdown, our spindle will fire up to operating RPM, and then the job is off and running. So now that we're actually cutting here, you can really see the importance of dust collection, especially since we're working with MDF. It is nasty, it does get everywhere, and it's just not good to breathe in, period. So we will stop the job here in a second and attach our dust shoe. All right, so now that the job is running, we wanna stop the file and save a break so we can attach our dust shoe. We'll press the stop cancel button once on the controller. Now remember, only press the stop cancel button once and you'll get this screen. It'll ask you if you'd like to save the break or discard the break. In this case, we wanna save where we left off and pick up later. So we're gonna press okay with save break highlighted. And you'll get nine different slots where you can save we're just gonna overwrite this one here by pressing the OK button one more time. Now we've returned back to our main screen so we can attach our dust shoe and then we'll pick up where we left off here in a second. Now the dust shoe is just a two-piece magnetic shoe so it'll snap right up into place. So to recall the brake list, you're gonna press the run and one button at the same time and let go. All right, so now we see our break list. It's gonna tell us the file here, which is just the file name. In this case, this here is our surfacing file. 
with it selected, we'll press OK. Now this screen here is going to tell you what line of G-code you left off on and what line number. So this is important if you accidentally broke a bit, you can always skip back lines of G-code or you can skip over them. You can cycle through them by pressing the up and down arrows or if you press the run pause delete button once, it'll tell you what line you're currently on and how many lines the file has. You can press run pause delete button one more time, it will zero it out, and you can enter in any number you wish and simply press OK to lock it in. We're not going to do that, we want to pick up exactly where we left off, which was line number six. Remember the stop cancel button is always going to be our go back button. So returning back to this screen here, we're going to pick up on line number six. Pressing OK, you'll see that work speed, fast speed, and speed scale screen again. And if we press OK one more time, our file is off and running. There's our three second countdown, and we're back in business. Okay, so now that our spool board surfacing job is done, we can go ahead and remove that tool out of there and get started on our next job. Now, if you have a machine like ours, that has been used quite a bit, and maybe you've got a little bit deeper grooves in the table, you may have to run that spool board surfacing job again. But that's not a problem. So let's get started on our next file. So the first job that we're gonna do is a V-carving operation. Earlier in the video series, you saw Michael create a photo V-carve. So this is a good example of that. This is just a simple movie Casablanca. And what we've done is a photo V carving operation with an 18 degree carving liner tool. Now today what we're gonna do is another photo V carving operation with an 18 degree carving liner tool so you can see how that operation works. But here's some other examples of some basic V carving operations that you'll do probably one of your first jobs ever. So we've got a Ford Motor Company sign here and of course our Hogwarts Express platform nine and three quarters. So this is a good example of some fun V-carving operations that you can do first time. The bit set that we're gonna be using today for this operation is gonna be the ABS 205. Now this bit set is gonna include two bits, a 90 degree V-carving bit, and the bit we're gonna be using an 18 degree carving liner tool. This bit set is great for any of these V-carving operations. All right, so we're gonna be using just a piece of maple for this V-carving operation. So let's go ahead and get that mounted on the table. We're gonna be using just two sets of our standard hold-down clamps to keep this piece mounted to the table. And these just slide right into our T-track. And we'll wanna go ahead and square this piece up on the machine as best we can. Now in the software, we have set that our origin is actually gonna be the lower left-hand corner of this workpiece. So you will notice I'm gonna go ahead and leave the bottom left-hand corner clamp off until we've got our XY0 set. Now it's always a good idea when you're clamping things down to always go back to your software and just double check and make sure that you're not gonna have any areas where your bit might make contact with your hold down clamp. So always make sure you got extra clearance. So with these locked down and tight, again, I'm gonna leave that bottom left-hand corner clamp off because I've decided to set my origin in the lower left-hand corner of my workpiece. Now sometimes you can also set your origin in the center of your workpiece but in this case, I have one square edge on this, and the top of this is just a live edge piece, so I don't really have a good area to check my, my center. So the bottom left-hand corner is gonna be the best way to do this here. Now, to find your XY0, typically we'll use a V-bit for this operation. This also happens to be the same bit that we're gonna be using for our V-carving operation, so I can go ahead and lock it in now. So now that our workpiece has been clamped down, essentially anytime you go to run a job, you're really doing three easy steps. Set your XY0 and your Z0, set your spindle RPM, and then run your job. 
It's those same three operations each and every time you go to run a job at the machine. So we're going to go ahead and thread off the collet nut here and just make sure we do have our quarter inch collet inserted and the collet is seated properly. Remember, these collets should lock into place into the collet nut. Thread that on and then go ahead and insert our 18 degree carving liner tool. Now it is important to remember with a bit like this, since we have a very fragile tip, we don't want to use a touch off puck for this operation. And the reason for that is we simply don't want to snap the end of the bit off. So we're going to use a manual method here for our Z touch off. Now that my bit has been inserted and everything is locked into place, it's time to set that XY zero. Remember, we're going to be using the lower left hand corner of this workpiece for our origin point. So all we're going to be doing is jogging to that location directly over that corner as best we can and setting the XY zero manually. Now we're going to be using our jog buttons on our controller so that we can move this bit to that lower left hand corner. Now one thing to note here, on this controller you have two different speeds, a fast speed and a slow speed. That's just your jogging speeds. That's indicated on the third line here by an F for fast or by pressing the fast slow button once, you'll notice we're now in low speed. So holding any button down, it's gonna jog in low or switch over to high and I'm now jogging in a higher speed. Now, one thing to also note on this, while in your fast speed, go ahead and watch the X for me, if I tap the button once, we're going to be moving in half of a millimeter increments. If we are in low speed, we're now in low, tap the button once again, we're now moving in tenth of a millimeter increments. So this will allow you to very precisely locate that bit to the lower left hand corner or wherever your origins need to be. So now our bit is right at the corner of our workpiece. So now we just need to set that XY0 again. Remember the XY0 button here, we'll set that origin. Now X and Y both read zero. That is now our origin point. So now it's time to set the Z0. Now since we're gonna be setting the Z manually, remember we're not gonna be using a touch off puck for this operation, just because we have a very fragile bit and we don't wanna snap the bit off, we have to do this manually. So I'm gonna use the paper method again. All right, so we're gonna use a piece of paper to find our Z zero. Looking at the Z here, we're gonna make sure we're in low speed. We're gonna bring the Z down in 10th of a millimeter increments until we're just dragging this piece of paper. And there we go, there's a little bit of drag right there. So that's perfect. So now what we wanna press on the controller is gonna be the Z zero button. We'll notice Z is now saying zero. And if we look visibly, our bit is right at the surface of the material. Okay, so now we've got our X, Y zero set and our Z is set. So I just want to visually make sure everything is in the right position. So at any time, no matter where the machine is, if you press the OK button on the controller, it's going to return to wherever the last set origin was. So it's going to go to the zero, zero point. In this case, it should stop right over the left hand corner of my workpiece, which it does. So my X, Y, zero is set. I know my Z is set. Now it's time to set that spindle RPM. So I'm just gonna change this to 400 or 24,000 RPM. And that's what we're gonna run this V-bit at. All right, so now that the RPM has been set, it's time to actually run our file. So I have my file saved on my flash drive here. That just gets plugged into the top of the controller. And now we can press the run, pause, delete button. It's gonna load our drive. And now we actually wanna select U-Disk because we're gonna run this right from the flash drive. So we'll press okay. And now we see all the files that are on that flash drive. We're gonna scroll down to the one that says NDVC, that's NDV carving is what we're gonna be doing. We'll press okay. And then again, we see that work speed, fast speed, and speed scale screen. So speed scale, remember, that's just a percentage of our feed rate. This bit is gonna run about 150 inches per minute. So we're gonna run that 
at 100%, which will be that 150 inches per minute. Pressing OK one more time, we're going to get that loading screen and our files off and running. Just remember, if you ever have to stop the file for any reason, you can always press that stop cancel button. So now our file is completed and you can see the finished result. So actually it did a really nice job. But what you'll notice is we got a couple little frays here and this is always going to happen. One of the things I would always recommend is get you a good set of dental picks. Just keep these in your drawer. These are great for cleaning up these little areas and just getting a lot of that fraying out of there. When you start getting into work where you're working with 3D models, these really come in hand on doing a lot of your cleanup work. All right. So we'll put these back in the drawer and now we're done. So we can go ahead and remove this from the machine because we are completely done at this point. There's our finished product. Now it's time to get some finish on it and we're done. So this concludes part one of our machine training portion. As you can see, we got some really cool results today with just a V-bit. You can do a lot of interesting things in just a short amount of time. So thank you for joining us and looking forward to seeing you for part two.